Good morning, everyone. I pray for you today that you would have the mind of Christ and that you would see things from Christ's perspective. I know that in our lives it's often hard because we tend to have tunnel vision. We only see what's right in front of us. And often we don't let the Father have the credit for seeing and helping us to see things with a lot larger vision or to see beyond ourselves. And so often we err there because we're not sure what the Father wants us to do. Well, the real issue is the Father wants us to trust Him and to begin to see things from His perspective. And as we begin to see things from His perspective, God then seems bigger. Why? Because God is bigger than our own perspective. God is larger than anything we can think. I love what Paul tells us in Ephesians, that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than any of us can say, think, dream, or imagine according to the power of God that works within us. Now, that's the Jerry Mann version. I just added a word or two there because God is bigger than I can think and bigger than my ego and bigger than my sight. And so today we come to one of those situations where Jesus is trying to help the disciples, particularly one disciple, to see more than he sees and to have more faith than he actually has. Because remember, the disciples are men and women just like you and I. <laughs> They have issues, they have stuff, they fight amongst themselves, they don't always understand, but they do know that they're following the Messiah. And they keep trying to figure out what it is they're supposed to do. And so Jesus has been in Jerusalem, so he goes back over now in John chapter 6. He goes back over to the other side to the Sea of Galilee, by the Sea of Galilee. And people follow him, right? Because Jesus is here, Jesus is doing miracles, Jesus is speaking. And people want to hear him. Jesus is more than just a popular preacher. Jesus is the one who's bringing to them and us the actual words of life with authority, with power, with sustenance. So the crowd follows him because they saw what he was doing with the sick. And so Jesus went up to a mountain and talked to his disciples. And so, as he's having conversation with his disciples, people are gathering. Now, people are gathering because the, the Passover is near. And so, there's more than just one or two folk, or 20 or 30. There's hundreds of people here. And later, we'll find out that there's over 5,000 people there. And so, Jesus is with them. And Jesus sees this loud, large crowd. And he says to one of his disciples, Philip, and, you know, Philip comes off as the practical disciple. In these A equals B equals C equals D. And my suspicions are, and I don't know this for sure, but my suspicions are that you have a person with a very logical mind. You should always work with the end in mind. And what other resources do our resources meet our need? Can we do these things? So Jesus says to Philip, he says, Philip, where are we going to buy bread for these folks to eat. Because Jesus sees they, they're on their way. Passover's near. They are hungry. They've been walking out there in the heat. There's no Muni. There's no Caltrain. They have been walking. There's no cars. You know, some, some of them may have a donkey cart, but they're walking. And it is hot. And they're hungry. Because that's what happens when you walk. You get hungry. You want to eat. He says, Philip, where are we going to buy bread for these people? Now, Jesus asked him this, as the word says, because he knew what he was intending to do, but he wanted Philip to get his head around who Jesus was, and so he'd have a larger view of Jesus, more faith in Jesus. So Philip says, well, 200 denarii worth of bread is insufficient for them, for everyone just to receive a little bit of this. I understand, here's the practical guy. Well, Jesus, I don't think we have enough money. And even if we had, you know, 200 denarii, I don't know that we could give anybody, everybody enough. You know, they just get a little bit. Jesus is thinking. 
Jesus knows what he's going to do, but he, he's trying to help Philip process. Then comes Andrew. <laughs> and Andrew comes and says, listen, there's a kid here who's got five barley loaves and two fish. But what are these to feed so many? Jesus says, have the people sit down. You know, have them sit down. And it's about 5,000 people. So Jesus took the loaves, giving thanks. He distributed it amongst them. Likewise, the fish, and they ate until they were all filled, had as much as they wanted. Imagine now, Jesus takes some bread, five loaves, two fish. Seems out of balance in my head, but that's I'd have it the other way around. And what does he do? He gives these people a Thanksgiving feast sitting there on their way to, to or from Jerusalem. And when they were filled, he said, gather up the leftover fragments so nothing will be lost. And he gathered them up, filled 12 baskets from the five barley loaves that was left over. Now understand, Jesus has taken the bread of the poor, barley. Typically, you know, folk have a little nice stuff, they'll eat wheat. We as Americans, most people don't, don't do much barley. We do barley if we're trying to do some type of a diet, but typically we've got wheat. And that's not my point. Here's my point. In having the mind of Jesus and seeing Jesus with a larger vision, here's what Andrew and Nathaniel, I'm sorry, Philip, should have realized. And that was this. That they have been with Jesus. And they have seen Jesus work. They have seen Jesus heal the nobleman's son, who his son is 16 miles away. They have been with him at the healing at the Bethsaida. They were there when Jesus healed the man. Philip was there when he healed the leper in Matthew 8. He was there when Jesus cast out the demons in Matthew 8. He was there when he, they dropped the paralytic through the roof. He's heard the parables of Jesus. He's heard the preaching of Jesus. He's seen Jesus still the sea. He has seen Jesus with legion in Mark 5. He's seen Jesus heal the woman with the issue of blood on the way to Jairus' house. Philip, what have you missed? You have missed the fact that God himself is at work. And so when we want to see what God is doing, we just need to look around us. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you experience on a daily basis of the Father speaking into your lives? Because our mind and Philip's mind are sometimes exactly the same. God, I don't see how you're going to do this. I just don't understand. Growing up as a kid, I knew when my dad said, I just don't see how, he was actually saying, no. I don't understand. He said that one day. He said, now, college sophomore, I think. He says, I just don't see how we're going to get you into school this year. I said, okay. I don't see how spurred me to understanding that God was able to do more than I could say, think, dream, or imagine. Because the Father was speaking not only to my dad's faith, but to my faith. And end of that story is, I didn't miss a semester of college and graduated in three and a half years. So again, understand, our minds like Philip some guy sometimes get stuck. Go back to what you see and what you know and what you have experienced with God and then let God do his work in you today. What happened? Some young man just brought Jesus what he had. Five loaves, barley loaves, two fish, and 5,000 people were fed. Where's your faith today? Are you stuck like Philip? I don't see how. Whereas Jesus is really trying to get you to trust him and have a larger vision of who Jesus is and can be in your life. Lord Jesus, thank you for this lesson from Philip and even Andrew. Lord, thank you that, Lord, you do the unexpected. You do things that are bigger than us. 
that we may understand and know that you are so much greater and bigger than us. Lord, thank you for those blessings. These things, Jesus, we pray in your holy, your mighty, and your blessed name, Lord. Amen. Be blessed today, dear friends.